Yeah? No. Some something is shaking. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello, good evening. Uh, good evening. All right, thanks for being here. And I see that the recording is already running, so that's good. We've got a, a, a recording happening. Hi, Mark. Good evening. Hi, Hi good evening. Now I am often curious what weather is like around the world. So for you in the areas where you generally live, are temperatures typically in the 30s Celsius? 20s? Yeah, 30s, 27 to from 27 to 30, yeah. Okay, all right, good. And, and we were just grateful today that it was, it was, I think it was about 15 today, 20. It was 15 to wow. between 15 and 20. So actually very nice. It's the, the summertime is coming for us. We're looking forward to it. All right, it's time. Let's go ahead and get started. So welcome to the mentoring session. What questions do you have? What topics would we like to address? Yeah, um, like you, you suggested uh, on the Slack channel, um, we could start by going through uh, our task for some of us that are having some challenges uh, submitting PRs. So we could start by knowing what the challenges are and how we can be unblocked. I like that idea very much. So Sharon, Sharon and I had worked earlier this week on a on an issue that was blocking or is getting in her way. Um, Sharon, are there things that that you've learned since then where we need to where we should discuss them? Things where we might be able to do a review that others could use and gain from your experiences. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. After we went through, I, I I added the code to the code base, but I haven't been able to push because I've been having internal problems running Jenkins. And are you in a place where you could share your desktop and we could watch and talk about what you're seeing? Okay, I'm not sure you, let me try to share my screen. That's great, I can see it. Okay, and so looking at your desktop, Sharon, okay, it looks like this is a, a Linux desktop, probably Ubuntu.
that's interesting. The the prompt that we saw there that said evaluating your shell environment is taking a long time. Uh, that usually would indicate that there was a uh, there's or that might indicate there's a configuration problem in your .bash RC or your .profile file. Okay, so you're you're going to. Ah, very good. Okay. Okay, so I was running to build errors. Okay, so is and is that the error message that you were getting? Let me, let me type in the command. Okay, great. Maybe Go ahead. You can you can continue then. I'll just tell you. Actually, it's perfect if we can just watch you. If you don't mind us watching you, you're welcome to you're welcome to just go ahead. Unless there's something sensitive, um, you could because you're in the plugin directory, so you could do a. Oh, oh, wait a sec. You're in tilde slash Jenkins underscore home. So, is this directory a development directory for the plugin, or is this a something that's different? No, it's, it's the one, but I cloned it inside the Jenkins home. Okay, good. So this is, so if you do a git space status here, it will tell us that you're inside a git repository. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we see that you have some changes. You've got an editor open. Yeah, okay, good. So when I run this command, I get a build error. Okay, good. Well, so let's see, let's let's watch the error. So forgive the the terrible pain of typing in front of other people. It's it's an awful terrible experience, and I agree it is. Okay, so that message that we're seeing there tells me that you're probably yeah. running Java 11, and that message is just fine. It should be harmless. But we'll probably want to check that you're running Java 11 and not Java 15 or 16 or, or some other version. The two versions we support are Java 8 and Java 11. And so after, after we get through this, okay, now it says the POM is missing, failed to build parent POM project. Okay, so that may fail to compile Expected 55, but was 53. Java bytecode version 53. 53 is, oh, oh. Okay, so that is a surprise. We'll have to, we'll have to look in after, after we see this fail. We'll have you run a Java space minus version. You don't have to do it now. Let's let this continue doing what it's doing. Okay, copying the dependency, that's good. Okay, copying a number of other plugins, all good. Okay, so this this so far looks successful. Yes. 
was running into that error. So Sharon, could you, um, oh, whoops, now what happened? Failed to, oh, oh, good. Okay, address already in use. All right, this, I know what we can do about it. Okay, so on your computer, there is already a program that's listening on port 8080. Yes. And um, do you, is that a program you could readily stop? If not, we need to give you the argument that will let you change which port number it uses. Looking it up now, port number yeah. for Maven HPI colon run. How to change the port number for HPI colon run. Here we go. Okay, so same command line again. Sorry, um, can I say something? Just something um, I think yes. might help. Yes. Uh, I think Jenkins is already running on that port. Okay. Yeah, because that's the port that Jenkins runs on. I don't know if yours is different, but that's what mine runs on. And, and, and that is absolutely correct. It is. There are also other things that could be running there. Do, do you have a local installation of Jenkins that's currently running? No, I don't really have, because this other project uses a different port. Okay, so, so open up your web browser and let's see if we can see what is running on port 8080. So here, type the URL HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080. and just hit enter. Interesting, it's still spinning. So while that's spinning, are you okay if we let that just keep doing what it's doing and switch back to your Visual Studio code? It's okay. Because mm -hmm. that may yet tell us something. Let's leave it running to see if it'll tell us something. Here, change your command line. So bring back the previous command line. And the up arrow is the one that I used to do it. Yeah, and then right before the HPI colon run, put in minus capital D, And then J as in Jenkins, E as in Edward, T as in Tom, T as in, so J-E-T-T-Y. So exactly, dot, period, a hard stop. I never, I, I'm never sure which, which form of, of punctuation people are accustomed to, sorry about that. Port, P-O-R-T. Equals, um, let's type 9090. And press enter. So what this is going to do is say, it, instead of using 8080, use 9090. Can I run it? Sorry, Sharon, I didn't understand what you said. Did you hit, did you press enter? Can I run it? Can you run it? Yes, please.
oh, and while we were there, we should have checked for which Java version. Oh, well, we'll, we'll remind me next time we need to check with a, what, which Java version is being used. Okay, good. That is exactly the correct Java version. Great. Okay, making progress. Okay, now this is where we had the failure previously, right? Where we were surprised and it stopped. So we'll hope that it will continue. And then you can open your web browser and come back to port 9090 instead of port 8080. Very good, so bring up your web browser. And let's see if it tells us anything about what's on port 8080. Oh, okay, so that was correct. You do have a Jenkins running on port 8080. So now we've got two of them running and that's probably making your poor computer very badly overloaded. So now the question, okay. is, now the question is, Are open up or in this same tab, you can, localhost colon 8080, change it to localhost colon 9090.
but I, I suspect your computer probably has relatively little memory, like maybe four gigabytes. And if so, then you likely don't want to run more than one Jenkins at a time, just because it tends to be fairly heavyweight on memory. More than one Jenkins at a time, just because it tends to be fairly heavyweight on memory. So the, the thing to type there is HTTP colon so the, the slash slash localhost colon slash slash localhost colon 9090 colon 9090 now you need http colon colon No, localhost no, colon, colon HTTP colon slash slash localhost. Yeah, instead of the 3000 there, put in 9090. Right, now if you hit enter. Right, now if you hit enter. There it was, good, okay. There it was, good, okay. Now, if you click the Jenkins click the hyperlink Jenkins. inside that page, it will take us to Jenkins. While, while that is loading, could you switch back to Visual Studio Code? I'd like to see if it's logging any messages in Visual Studio Code to give us a hint. Looks like we may have just lost Sharon. That's unfortunate. Uh, do others of you have questions that you'd like that we should that are, are getting in your way of getting your pull requests merged or submitted and merged? Esther, if I remember correctly, there was some surprises that you had encountered. How is how is it going for you? It's it's going it's going fine for me. I was able to um, I think my pull request got merged this week, sometime this week. And then I had uh, some suggestions this morning for multi-line, multi multi-line, um, multi -line, um, multi -code build step, steps, and yeah. Very good. Okay, so so you're there's you're not aware of anything that's preventing you from going further. Um. No, what I'm doing now is um, I'm trying to work on the, the documentation for the uh, nodes and processes because there is like it's basically empty. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just trying to I'm, I'm I've been surfing online for information. Great. So, okay, yeah. very good. So plenty of things to do. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Lucy, I don't think that you were hitting any specific problems. Were there any specific problems that were, were affecting you? No, on my side, so far so good. It's only that I had a pull request that I've, I've submitted not far from now, but then I've seen 
there's some feedback that have been given so i'm supposed to rectify that and okay so so you you did receive yeah. some feedback yeah yeah the second very good the, uh, okay one of my worries is that sometimes we fail to give feedback and that's the worst possible is as soon as you have submitted something we would like to get it reviewed quickly okay. good. but i'm good on but then i have this question by the way it's on let me check there's some things which are some parameters that are nested then i was wondering how i'm supposed to do it because most of the parameters were already done they were already added the online help but then majority are unnested so i was wondering how i'm supposed to go about it but then i after i did the one that were not nested then i moved ahead so maybe you can tell me how I should handle that okay so and which plugin were you invest which plugin were you working on input step ah okay all right so let's let me let me i'm going to run my jenkins instance and share my screen and and then let's let's look at it together because there may be something that that I'm not yet understanding. Hang on just a minute. So I'm going to share my screen now and let's take a look at it. Share screen here. Okay, so you should see a Jenkins running. Okay, and now if we look at pipeline syntax and Tell me again, it was, it was input which step. input? Input step. Input, okay, good, all right. Input, so input. And so good, there's already help here and already help for message. So those two are good. And then when I click advanced, the okay, so custom ID has it, but OK button caption is the one that does not. And the others, oh, oh, right. OK, and now then your question is, what do I do about these, right? I'm going to add a parameter that's a Boolean parameter. Is, am, am, I, am I getting to your question? Yeah. And, and you, may, or you may find one where you say, oh, this thing doesn't have any help on, it's got help for parameters in general, but what about git parameter, for instance, or some other parameter that may not have help for it? Like, okay, here's a good one, label, all right? So here's a label parameter and it has no help for name, no help for default value and no help for description. Am I, am I on the right track for your question? Yeah. Okay, so, so and this was, a, this was a subtlety that I had not understood initially and had to learn more about what's happening here is other plugins are contributing these parameters. Okay. So, so in order to find a place, where would I add help for Git parameter? I have to go find the plugin that is contrib or label. I have to go find the plugin that is contributing that and then make changes in that plugin, not even in the input plugin. So for me, that's a complicated one. And this was the same class of problem we have with the build step uh, plugin is we have to make add help to a whole bunch of other plugins because they're contributing parameters to this thing. So that was me giving an awful lot of long-winded description of why I think in this case, you're probably done with OK button. When you finish that, this plugin is done because the other things come from other plugins that are contributors. So I think what that means is we, we assign you to take, you could switch to a new plugin. And let me see if I can find, we've got one assigned for you, I think when you were done with the first. So, uh, 
Oh, nope, I didn't have it there yet. So just a minute while we look up the pivot table. Okay, so here is the what pivot. I was thinking is, can you oh, hear me? I can hear you, go ahead. Oh, I was thinking if I could continue with the other task, then just in case I'm able to to work that on time, then I can go back to maybe research on those nested ones or just give me a different plugin because I'm seeing we are almost, yeah, time is really going fast. Yes, and I think going to a different plugin would be just fine and will certainly be helpful. Okay. So you were working on input working step, on input so we step. could we could assign you to email extension, email extension. and say, all right, for the last week of the project, work on email extension, and let's take a look at it. It seems to have quite a number of things that have no help, like subject and body and attach log. So I think this is a good place for you to be able to do, to add some help for those things. Okay, so with that one, I'm only going to work with it for that specific task, but the rest of the task, I'm still going to continue with the input one, right? Um, I think, well, I don't know that the other tasks are, let's see, so the, the task here was insert missing pipeline help. And that for me is the most valuable of the tasks. That's the one we really wanted to get you through. Um, okay. This one is also helpful. And if you can do that for input, great. Likewise, this one, yeah, if you can do that, oh, good. This optional one, you should not, I don't think you even need to do it for the input step. I didn't see anything in the input step that would need this. Did, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, maybe the point of clarification is I'm less concerned about getting all the tasks done than rather it's much more important to me that you understand how to interact and how to contribute and that you accomplish these these valuable things like inserting missing pipeline help that is so valuable to us having you do it on the email extension plugin would be a great help oh it's okay so are you are you comfortable with that yeah yeah then the last thing, let me see if my laptop is still working properly. So I've noted something that I've been told, the feedback that I've been given on, on my PR, let me confirm. Oh. See, and your PR was to the input step, right? input whoops where did it go lucy oh yes okay let's go there and let's go look at that that together okay when i'm back again oh, I think I am. oh he told me that i use the different so just redo it in a different format Um, okay, so maybe I'm I'm hearing the wrong. Is this Lucy? Oh, oh, oh! I see. Whoops! I'm not sure. I, okay, so let's look that up. So it looks like you use ASCII doc formatting in the Markdown document. I don't think you made. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, I see. I see. Oh, good. All right, very good insight from Oleg. So what this is, this is adding, what you've done is you've added online documentation. And what he's noting is this file, it's suffix.md, says that it is markdown. And markdown is a different format than, than this style. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the corrected style, if that's okay. 
because you may not recognize the difference between the two formats. Yeah, so by the way, for Markdown for Skidoc, GitHub supports preview. So you can easily yes. check whether it formats well. And in this case, it won't. That, actually, that's a very good insight. So if we cancel out of this, and then Oleg noted that there is a preview option here. If I just do this and open it, you'll see, oh, that doesn't format as a hyperlink. Yeah, and when you edit it, when you're editing text from uh, uh, GitHub or, or web interface, or when you use ID like Visual Studio Code, IntelliJ IDEA, again, you can uh, turn on a live preview so that you can uh, dynamically check what uh, you get as a result. Right, so in this case, if I do that, it shows, oh, huh, that, okay, well, let's see. If I do, I'm gonna make switch this to use markdown syntax like that. And then this, instead of using link colon, we go like this. And now to use Oleg's recommendation, if I click preview, that should, oh, that preview doesn't help as much there, does it, Oleg? Because what it's showing me is preview of the diff. But what that did is this converts use markdown format instead of ASCII doc format yeah. for the markup language. All right the hyperlink markup. And the second link is also broken. You say this, that one is broken? Oh, mm. interesting. No, That's... this one is okay. I mean, uh, the link uh, in line 12. Line tw oh, oh, this one, right, right, got it. So we've got another one we need to fix. Okay, so let's start a review. And then this one also needs a fix. And it looks like uh, the change log, the ch I'm not sure on the change log link either. That one also needs a fix, doesn't it? No, no, the change log link is correct. Okay. Yeah, it's marked down. SCM checkout step. So, yeah, I think that got it. Okay. So, Lucy, does does that answer your question in terms of what the what the meaning was of the feedback hyper uh, markdown format instead of ASCII doc format. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. And it looks like Sharon is back. Sharon, did you want to continue? Um, the screen sharing, or, or do you have further questions? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry for that. I think you can just tell me which, which other, let's say on the port 88 was running, then I can stop it later on. And, and I suspect that will be the best experience for you anyway, is if you'll stop stop Jenkins on port 8080 that will free memory on your computer and hopefully it will it will run faster for you as well. Yeah, but when I switched I had issues logging in to another port number. When you say you had issues logging into another port number, tell us more about what that what happened? Okay, I 
I switched the port internally on the Jen Jenkins folder. And then I had to use another port number. It was 8081. Then when I was trying to log in, it was giving me a login error. A login error. Now that's yeah. So a login error like there was a like you didn't have the right password or okay. I was using the password and the username that I got by email. The correct one. Yeah. So the the in general the Jenkins you're running locally when you're you're doing development won't require a username and a password. Yeah. And unless you did a local installation of Jenkins, did you locally install Jenkins? No. Huh. Okay, I don't know what that could be then. So we, we could certainly look at it on your screen to see if we can, so it was a Jenkins user interface, but the Jenkins user interface was not, was prompting you for a username and password. Yeah, because I changed the port number. Huh. Interesting. So after that, I had to switch back to 8080. Okay. And you were able yeah. to log in through port 8080. Yeah, but now okay. I was getting the build error. The one that you saw. And when you say the build error, you mean the one that said that the port was busy? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that means you've definitely got something still running on your computer that's using port 8080. And so you probably want to find that process and stop it. So find that process and kill it. Okay, I'll still try to kill it if it will be successful. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, Esther did, and Esther, I believe we addressed your questions, your concern, your your topics. Um, no. Yes. Uh, the challenge I am I'm having is the fact that the PLs I submitted, uh, the maintainers are not, should I say, are not always available to review. So I wouldn't know uh, if I should continue submitting PRs or I'm supposed to wait for mm -hmm. it to get reviewed before I proceed. So it's, it's a challenge to me because I'm not getting reviews from them. Understood. Okay. And is that from the, from the Artifactory plugin? Is it from other plugins? From Artifactory plugins. Or if there is any other plugin I can... That, that would have a fast review that I could work on. Good, good question. Let's take a look at the list. And that way, because I think there are plenty of plugins that could, could benefit from your, your help. And so, for instance, we could put you on the SSH agent plugin. Let me do a quick look at its help to see if there's material it's got two things that don't have any help for them. So that would be one that you could, you could certainly do. Uh, we could also have you look at the sonar plugin, I suspect is, so SSH agent, I would expect to have reasonably quick review time. Um, we could, I don't think that there's much chance that Sharon's going to get to another plugin. So we could put you on config file provider or on, see, have you looked at pipeline utility steps? That one I thought had many that, oh no, this one has most of the things that are quite well documented. Okay, so that's not a, not a, not a good choice to put you on. So what if we put you onto SSH agent and then 
config file provider just had some attention very recently. Let's see if it's got, I'm not sure that there's much to, well, that may be, no, those things are pretty well described. So config file providers, a poor choice on Yinya. Let's, let's keep looking. Okay, how about, see, what if we assigned you to HTML publisher? No, that looks like things of all, all or almost all have help. And Esther, I assume you have not yet started on Workflow CPS? No. Although this one, this one's got, this one's already got plenty of material on it. So Sorry, what's CPS? Uh, so had you had you started any work on a different plugin than your initial plugin you were working on? Oh no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Okay, good. Good. All right. That's that was the question. Okay. So, okay, this one looks like HTTP request looks like a good choice. Onyinye, let's put you on this one as well, if that's okay. Cynthia, we're going to not not assume that you will work on that one and put it on Onyinye. Uh, so which one? Okay. Uh, the HTTP request plugin. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm working on the basic step, the, the basic steps. Perfect. Great. So you hadn't started on any of any, you hadn't started anything after basic steps. So Anine, if you'll take HTTP request, is that workable for you? Yes, that's fine. Thanks. Great. And now let me check to see who the maintainers are on that. Let's, let's do a quick look. Okay, Gianario Oliverio. Where is the developers list? Okay, so this one is not someone I recognize. Oleg, is this a name you recognize as likely to? I guess we could look at the pending pull requests and see if there are an abnormal number of them. So, is PP request plugin? Martin Danjou used to maintain that. Oh, but, okay. But yeah, I believe uh, that uh, plugin was up for adoption for a while. I'm not sure what's the current state. Oh, okay. So, okay. so you can guess the current state. So I took release uh, uh, to fix uh, tables to diffs in this plugin. Right. Uh, with permission uh, from somebody, but yeah, it's not like a maintainer of this plugin. So probably I should put it for adoption. Well, but but since you've got release permission, if I were to do code reviews of Onyinye submissions, yeah, I you can. you have a potential to assist with the code review as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, Super. So look whether there is something else submitted, but yeah. So if uh, there is something which justifies the release, I can. Uh, uh, just cut to that. But yeah, please uh, request my review because if you just ping me on GitHub, it may be easily lost these days. Well, well, and I don't think I don't even think we need to require you do the review. Or like I am, I am happy to do the review or to mm -hmm. enlist Angelique or or Meg or Kristen to help with the review. It's just knowing that we've got someone who has merge permission. Is, is already a big plus. Then after we've done the reviews, we can let you know, hey, reviewed this and we think it's ready. Yeah. So there is a minion full fix already. So once you create a pull request, once it's done, we can merge it and release. Great, okay. So mm -hmm. on Yinye, then that, that is, okay. 
Next target, HTTP request. All right. Any other open questions or open topics? Um, I have a question. So when I'm trying to add examples, code examples, so when I when I look at the Git plugin, uh, so like the examples look quite old. I don't know how they um, they added the, the just to make them like laugh. Because when I look at the like in the in the code base, I just see the the pre tag. I don't see anything that. Ah, That's okay. Me. Well, and, and so let's let's take a look at that. So what you're maybe we could first look at at the plugin document. So the example that the example that's surprising you is inside Jenkins. Is that right? So it's it's here. And when we look at an example here, whoops. Just a moment. So if I look at under this question mark, the things that you're seeing bold are these exam these texts. T tell me more. Which which thing are you seeing? Um. So if you okay, maybe I think it would be different for the documentation, but maybe. So if I go to the documentation, there's an okay. example like git step with. HTTPS and change log is a bit. Okay, so let's look at the, I think you mean, help, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think you mean this place here. Is, is this the page you're referring to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for the, okay, for good, the all right. So, so I'm at least on the right page. Okay, yeah. now I'm gonna scroll down and you tell me when to stop. Yeah. Yeah, so like those, uh, the pipelines snippet generator, like the examples look. Like that? Yeah. But then when oh. I, when it's in the online help, it's, it just doesn't look that black. I don't know if they, there's anything like CSS that's been added. I don't know. Ah, okay. Good, good question. And I'm not even sure that what you're seeing, what this technique that I'm using here is actually the best choice. So that's a very good question. I can show you why they're different and we could talk about what makes them different. And, yeah. and we may then say, oh, and this and Mark did it a dumb way and he shouldn't have done that. So let's let's do that. Let's look at the source code for this to compare why this is bold and why this is not is underlined but not bold. I think that's your question. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's and I think what we can do is go look at the source code for that. So let's take this text and go find that in the source code. So here it is. I think this is the help file. All right, so it Oh, I've got to have it bigger. My eyes can't see it that well. Okay. Um, sorry, Mark. I'm not. I'm not seeing the title, like the example git step with. So I'm saying like if I try to look at how it looks in the online help and how it looks in the documentation, like this example, the pipeline snippet generator, generate this example. It looks different. Okay, so what you're saying is this text here looks yeah. different than this text here. So yeah, the one you just uh, um, selected first looks different when it's in the online help. 
Ah, ah, okay. So, so I'm in, I'm in the snippet generator, and you're saying it looks different when I'm in the steps reference here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so let's me, let's. Oh, go ahead. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like for me, when I'm adding an example, like it doesn't look like that. Maybe I can share a screenshot. Yeah, so here, I'm gonna stop sharing and let you share a screenshot and let's take a look at what you're seeing. Okay, okay, that's fine. Um, so I was using my phone to have to change. See, and I think I've got, yeah, share screen is allowed. Okay. So Cynthia, it looks like you may have dropped out and just returned. Cynthia, can you hear me? Cynthia, we're not hearing you. Are there other questions while we wait for Cynthia to return? Yes, hi, Mark. Um, for the, the, uh, the definition on the website, on, not the website, the, what's, what's the, on, the, uh, on the page, on the documentation page, I was wondering if you could, um, say, give a little explanation. Oh, uh, very sorry, I don't know why, uh, when I try to use my laptop, the internet just, but let me share now. Okay, thanks. So Esther, we'll get back to your question. Go ahead, Cynthia. Okay. okay. So you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Yeah, so this is how the examples look um, for me. But then when I do the, the Git plugin, this is how they look. I don't know if you see the difference. They, so for here they look quite bold and it's different from here. Ah, uh, okay. So the, the, the concern is about the font? Yeah, the font. So I was wondering if there's some CSS that's been added. Cause they uh, not look as, different. Not as, well, certainly there is CSS that's being used in, in each of the contexts to, to 
control things, but I don't think that's within your control. Let me do a quick check on that, okay. on the, the markup used for those, those examples. I thought it was just the code style or, but, but let me look, let's. It was, okay, Jenkins, plugins. No, we need to go to the pipeline documentation, pipeline steps. Okay, here we go. And the example is that. Okay, now here. Okay, so the, the sample is in. Yeah, it's just using pre. Um, interesting, all, all it's using is the pre tag and, and that may be the wrong thing. Uh, Oleg, do you remember, am I supposed to use a different markup for source code? Well, it depends because yeah, you can just just use code. Code, uh, okay. Code uh, will mark it as code. Preformatted forces formatting. So whatever you put uh, within preformatted will be printed as is. And if you put HTML text within uh, pre, then they will be printed. Okay, so then, then what that's saying is I made a mistake in the Git plugin and we've got different formatting because of my mistake. It should be listed as code instead of, or so it's, I don't need to worry about it wrapping or, well, do I? I want it, I want it to be, I'll have to look at it and see. That's a good, it's a good question. Excellent question, Cynthia. And my use of the pre-tag is probably wrong. And now I've got to go figure out what to do to correct that. And it will likely be, a code block, so use the code tag, and I may then have to put in a line break to assure that it doesn't get wrapped into the paragraph. Um, I don't think it's the problem of the pre, because I actually also had to use pre so that I can maintain the structure of uh, the code examples. And also I tried using the code block, but it didn't work. So I don't think um, the problem is the pre tag, because the pre tag is actually needed to keep the structure, the, how it looks. Interesting. Okay. Well, so then maybe have you been have you committed your changes to uh, your repository and pushed them to GitHub? If so, if you could send me either by Slack or by email a link to the branch where you're working, I could take a look at it and see if I could if I could understand it better. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks. Because I'm, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent certain. Uh, the the advice from the, I think we received advice from Daniel Beck, or someone else that that pre was was a poorer choice than code, because code this is code. What it that's noting the semantics of it. It is code. So um, let's let let me take a look at your example and see if I can understand it. Okay. So Esther, back to your question. Yes, um, I'm here. Yeah, so I was basically saying, um, okay, so I'm trying to open up the page. Okay, so for the um, nodes and processes documentation page, it says pipeline steps, locking agents and workspaces and running external processes that may survive a Jenkins restart or agent reconnection. Yeah, I was wondering if you could um, just maybe do a little explanation. Just something. Okay, so different. nodes and processes, hang on just a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen and, and then let's let's be sure that I'm understanding what will what what your question is. So 
Okay, so I've got the pipeline notes and processes page up on the screen. Say the say mm -hmm. the the text that you were having the question about. Um, pipeline steps, locking agents and workspaces. Pipeline steps, agents. Oops, agents and. It's it's not this page. I don't think it's this page. It's not this. Page. Oh, it is. Not. Okay, sorry. So it was. Tell me again. What was the, which which page was it? It's a uh, plugins.jenkins.io slash workflow durable task. Workflow so durable task. Page. Oh, yeah. okay. But it's the it's so it's the plugins page for workflow durable yes. task. Yeah, okay. All page. right. So it's this page right here. Is this the one? Yes, this one. Okay. All right, and, and what was your question there? Are you? Um, the statements, especially the, the running external processes that may survive a Jenkins, it's a bit, um, I don't know. I just need I just need a little clarification. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so so what you're really trying to do is you're trying to parse this sentence, right? You're trying to comprehend mm -hmm. what is this sentence yes. saying to me? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So so and and this is this might be a place where where a, a conversion one of the optional steps we'd identified was converting to documentation as code. Um, yes. This this plugin has very limited documentation in this particular file it's showing us. I'm going to mm -hmm. go through the sentence and let's talk about each piece of the sentence as we go. So, pipeline steps, locking agents and workspace. So these are the it, this plugin provides pipeline steps that can acquire locks on agents that can use agents and mm -hmm. workspaces so so directories or folders inside the agents so this the, the steps provided this pipeline are related by this by this plugin are related to actions that do work in workspaces or that might use agents and even might lock them and and, and then in addition to using agents and using workspaces in the agents this plugin provides utilities things that will allow us to run external processes inside those agents. Okay, so that far, any questions about the, the pieces I've already just I've described up to there, because then it gets more complicated yeah. after that. So you no, said I understand. no. Okay, great. All right. So that now, now the next part is, is that Jenkins Origin, as it origin, was originally was created, had a job type that if I restarted Jenkins, all the work that was being done inside that job type would be lost. It would, lost is the wrong way to say it. The processes running inside it would die. It would be stopped and unable to, unable to continue even if I later reconnected, it was gone. But pipeline added the facility to allow me to serve for uh, to allow work that is going on on an agent to survive and continue operating even if Jenkins restarted while that agent was doing work. So that's why the that may survive a Jenkins restart. So this is saying one of the one of the key things about pipeline is durability. It has the ability to continue running, even if the Jenkins controller temporarily restarted itself. Oleg, did I did I make a terrible mistake in my description? I'm sure I'm not precisely correct on on all the words I used, and I apologize for that. Uh, that's fine. Sorry, um, yeah, I'm not uh, following 100 oh, percent that, closely, but that's what okay. you described uh, looks fine with me. Great. And, and so, so, so that far says, ah, these things that this plugin provides 
do things with agents in workspaces using external processes, and they will continue running on the agent even if I restart the controller. Yeah, so actually um, the artifact idea of this plugin is descri more descriptive than the text because <laughs> we have a durable task uh, plugin which basically provides uh, this framework which allows to create processes and tasks on agents which would survive uh, uh, loss of connection with the uh, Jenkins controller. And pipeline durable task step is basically API on the top of that for specifically for pipeline so that you can run asynchronous pipeline steps, which again use the CPI and become more robust against the stars. I like that. I, I, that that's that's, that's a, a great way to describe it. It is that this text right here talks tells us about the implementation inside the Java code. There is a durable task step that provides these attributes, okay. that provides these these behaviors. Yeah, anyone is welcome to document it a bit more. <laughs> you can just yeah. add a pull request. So, so then, then Esther, the next piece, this agent reconnection, is for me, my mental model, another variant of Jenkins restart. Right? If for some reason the network connection between the agent and the controller were broken, but the agent process kept running. And the controller was eventually able to reestablish that connection. The the results would be retained and usable still by that controller. Okay. That, that that was an excellent question. Do you have more questions on that topic? No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay. Now, uh, any other questions from anyone else? Yeah, something glitching. So there's this PR that we were checking, the re most recent one, the one that we've just done now. So I was checking if they could merge, but I've seen on my side the test two tests have failed and two have passed. So is that this one here? Oh, yes. Okay. Now, now I have to hang my head in shame. So this is where I think if we look at this, we will see, so I'm just navigating to go find it. And what we will see is that either the tests may already be failing on the master branch or uh, the tests may be, fail may be in intermittent on the master branch. So let's go look at it and see. So nope, the master branch tests are all passing. And now yours was PR 49, was that right? 49. And yet you haven't changed any Java code at all. And we got a test failure here. Let's see what it says, forbidden for, I, I don't know why that would fail, but it's certainly not related to anything you changed as far as I know. Let's look and see anything that it hints. No, so my usual pattern there is let's run it again. And I have permission to do this, unfortunately, and the maintainers have permission to do this, but pull request submitters do not. So uh, the only answer I've got right now is that looked like a transient error because you had had tests that passed in build number four and build number three. And the code you're changing, if we look at the changes, you're just updating the README, which should not alter the Java code at all. Yeah. So in that case, what, what you may have to do is inside the pull request, say something like, mark wait. the ci.jenkins.io tests are flaky, could you run it again? Right, and, and that, 
that for this for the moment is probably the simplest approach there just mention me or um yeah me or there are several others but i promise i'm one of them so and, and that also helps hang my head saying okay we need to figure out why that test is flaky and what we can do to fix it okay Any other questions? No, don't have any okay. from my side. All right, you've been most patient. Meg and potentially Angelique will meet with you on Monday. If you've got questions over the weekend, I'll probably available, be available in Slack. So don't be shy about asking your questions. I'll post a recording of this session. It'll likely be one or two hours from now before the recording is posted in case you need to refer back to it. Yeah. One uh, quick note from me. So if we should be a request plugin, I will be merging uh, to pull requests uh, which might uh, require additional documentation because they introduce new parameters. Excellent. So Onyinye, um, there may be even more things arriving in, on the HTTP request plugin mm -hmm. that, that will need even more, more, have even more items to document. Okay. Great, thanks everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the sharing and we'll end the session. Thank you very much for your time. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thanks, all. Yes, Mark, Oleg, uh, thanks would, for. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, would you have a few minutes afterwards? Mm, another topic. I do. Yes, absolutely. You want to yeah. connect in a in a separate session? Yeah, it would be better. That's great. I'll end this meeting and we can chat.